Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for meeting with us in this extra break room for TRS to meet with our representatives. I will turn it over to them. I will ask that everybody keep their computer, phones, tablets on mute unless we get to the end and we ask a couple of questions. Thank you very much. And it's all on you now. Okay, good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Wait a minute. <laughs> Every, good morning, everyone. I tell you, the days just morph into each other. Morning is day, day is morning. But my name is Monique Providence, and I am your presenter today. I represent Teachers Retirement System along with my team, TRS Member Education Racine, TRS Member Education Daniel, and TRS Member Education Roland. So um, just to introduce myself, if you don't know me already, I've been working with CUNY, um, with Holland and company for a few years, but overall I've been working for Teachers Retirement System for 25 years. Even though I look very young, I am 25 years in to working with the system. So I definitely know TRS uh, quite well. I know people are coming into the room. So this is the pre-retirement workshop that was, um, that was um, put together from the CUNY team. So with all of that being said, we do have a presentation that we want to talk to you about, and it is about preparing for retirement. So um, first things first, what I want everyone to know is that um, if any of you are planning on retiring, the one thing that I want you all to know is that TRS has made the process of retiring much easier. You do not have to come to the TRS office to file papers for retirement you can essentially file your papers online. And by filing your papers online, you are allowing yourself the ability not to be able to come to our office. You can do it in the comforts of your home. Um, there's more people still coming inside of the room, so I'm allowing them to, to come in. I have not gone any further. I'm in the first screen. I'm not going any further because I see that the people are coming. So um, it seems like they were all in the um, beginning retirement series, similar to yesterday, and then they just transferred over. So I've been admitting everybody in. So it yes, shouldn't be fine. too much. Okay. That's fine. But we don't want our CUNY members to feel like they missed out on anything. So that's why I'm, I'm stalling a little bit more but I, I, because I'm going to give up a packed set of information within this within this hour. And again, I don't want anyone to meet. So um, again, my name is Monique Providence and I've been working for TRS for 25 years. I am the member education manager and it's our job along with my team to prepare our members for retirement and to educate the TRS members. So as I've said before, those that are just coming in that did not hear me speak, TRS has made the retirement process much easier for the TRS member. We do have that option to file your papers for retirement if you choose to do so online. You do not have to fill out a hard copy paper. All you have to do is be a registered user and you go to the TRS website and you add, you sign in with your username and your password. And by signing in, you will have access to your account, which is this screen that you see here in front of you. This is a sample screen of an actual TRS member. So when you log on to the TRS, your TRS account, you're gonna be on the home screen. And when you're on this home screen, obviously we always want you to look at your account information. You're gonna look at your membership number. You're going to look at your tier, your date of membership. You're gonna look at your balances in your account, making sure that any loans outstanding or there are no loans outstanding, whether it's for the QPP or the TDA. Once you've done all of this and you've checked everything on the home screen, you're gonna click on the menu bar. And when you click on the menu bar, it's gonna open up all of the things that you can do from the home screen, profile, documents. But we're going to the eForms tab. And when you go to the eForms tab, 
you're going to go to the tab that says service retirement. And under service retirement, you click on that link and it will allow you to go to the service retirement application. Now, before I go any further, I'm showing you the service retirement application link for tier four, because that is the most popular group that we have at TRS. But I would love to know from all of you, if you could please type in the chat section, please tell me what tier you are in and my colleagues will let me know since I'm unable to see the chat. So please let us know what your tier is and then one of them will send me a text to let me know what the breakdown of it is. Cause I'm curious to know if I have tier ones in the room, if I have tier twos or tier fours or even tier six. I am actually a tier four member with the 25 years that I currently have. So I'm just showing you that when you log on to the TRS website and you're gonna file for retirement, you're gonna go to the service retirement tab, everyone, and you're gonna click on the one that is specific for you. This one was just specifically for a tier four member. If you are tier one, it's gonna show tier one. If you are tier six, it's gonna show, show tier six. Now, under the service retirement application e-form, there are a few parts that you have to fill out. You have to fill it out from part A all the way to part G. Now, because I only have one hour to talk to you today, it's not enough time to go into the whole retirement e-form, but we do have sessions available for you to go to at a later time. And we will provide you with those dates at the end of the session. But to get more into the theory of the retirement, let's talk about how your retirement allowance is calculated. Your retirement allowance is actually calculated based on your age at retirement, the day that you retire, what is your age? It is based on your total service credit. It is based on your final average salary. And then if you're tier one or tier two, it's also based on your balances. So with all of that being said, let's go into a tier one um, final average salary. Now under tier one, you, it depends on the title that you have been in. Now we know historically CUNY members, TRS members that work for CUNY are in their positions for long periods of time. So if you've been in your position, your title for three or more years, when we determine your final average salary, which is one of the factors, it is based on the last 12 months of your salary. So if your retirement date is gonna be July of 2023, we are going to look at your salary based on 12 months. That's it, that's how we do. Okay, now there is another way to look at the final average salary and that is the five consecutive year. It's not as popular, especially for CUNY because like I said, most CUNY stay in the, stay in the um, position that they have been in. So under the final average salary for the five consecutive years, the FAS is the average of the annual earned salary during any five consecutive years selected by you. So for example, if you, the bar graph at the bottom shows your salaries from 2023 back to 2016. The bar graph shows the highs and the lows of a person's salary. So in this example, the five consecutive years that a member could choose would be the one in the middle because it's giving them the highest salaries. Now, under this example, the last five years. Now, in most cases, the example that I showed for the one year is the more popular, but if you were to use this, all we do is take those five years that you have selected and we divide it and we get an average of that. And that's how we determine the FAS. But the first example, 12 month rule, 12 months of salary, that's what we're going to look at. Now, for my tier two members, under the final average salary, it's generally the average of your highest three consecutive annual salaries. 
This is also the case for a tier four member as well, tier three, four. But we look at the salaries generally, and then we get an average of that. There is something that is called the Kingston legislation that can close you out at 20%. Again, it's a little bit too much for us to get into in this class, but we do have classes that really go in depth on how we determine the final average salary and how this Kingston legislation is a part of it. Now for tier four, it is the same thing. Under tier two, we look at the 20% rule, but under tier four, we look at it under the 10% rule. So with that being said, that's how we determine the final average salary for tier four, three, four. And for tier six, tier six is a little more complicated, but it's generally the average of your five highest earned years. And under that, um, we would get the five highest and we would determine the final average salary. Again, a little too much for us to get into within a one hour period for all of the different tiers. But to move further into the final average salary, what does the final average salary include? It includes your contractual salary. It includes your union increases. If you do multiple employment where you're working for CUNY and the DOE, that's an example that is considered multiple employment. The research foundation is not considered multiple employment. Full-time and adjunct teaching at the same time is part of the final average salary. And any type of retroactive payments that you're supposed to receive, it would also be a part of that as well, all right? Now, some, and I've, I said this yesterday, and I say this all the time, some members focus a lot on the final average salary, but the final average salary, I don't think it's the main focus. The main focus is the total service credit because the service credit is the foundation of how we determine what your pension is going to be. What do I mean where that is concerned? The more years that you all work, is the higher your pension is gonna be. If you look at a person that has worked only five years to a person who has worked 20 years, the person who has worked 20 years is gonna receive a higher pension because they work for 20 years. It's just common sense. So there's different types of service that you can have. The one that's the most popular for all of us is membership service. Especially if you've working for 20 years, you would have a lot of membership service, service that is rendered while you are a member. Another type of service that you can possibly have is transferred service, service that is rendered while you were working um, in another city or state agency and you transferred the service over to us. Another type of service is optional service where that service could fall under prior service, military service, or aim and service. That is all the different types of service that you can possibly have. And the thing with that is that all of this service is gonna be added up together, everyone, and it's gonna be your total service credit. So you want to work as much years as possible as long as you can so that you can receive a higher pension, okay? So with all of that being said, um, when it's time for you to retire, we're going to add up all of the service. This information is in your annual benefit statement. Now your annual benefit statement is um, found on your TRS account. So you would log on to the TRS account with your username and password, and then you'd be able to see your annual benefit statement. As some of you already know, TRS does not mail out these statements to the members anymore. Now, service is, a, as I said, service is a big important factor to the TRS member. And it's important factor to all of us, actually, especially if we're working for city service and we know that service is an important factor. Sometimes our CUNY members do have a service issue. Sometimes our TRS members have service issues but we wanna address those issues if you have any. If your annual benefit statement is blank, I would want you to go to the TRS website. You would go to the form section and you would go to the statements and you will go to the 
ABS inquiry form. That is if your ABS is blank, you would fill out the one that is applicable to you. If it's if you're tier one and two, you fill that out. If you are tier three, four, tier six, you fill out the other form. Now, if you need total service, like a service letter of how much service that you have, you can request one depending on the tier that you are in. Now, if you want one for tier one and two, you request the SD-154. And if you are a tier three, four member, you would request the SB-66. These forms are on the TRS website. And my colleagues who are in this room today are posting up the links in the, in the chat section so that you can have access to those forms. Now, as we know, our CUNY members work at different colleges. You might have two colleges that you're working at at the same time. If you're working at multiple colleges, then we need you to fill out an RE5. The RE5 is a service form that you're gonna to give to your college, let them fill it out so that we know the colleges that you're working at so that you can receive credit for it. And this is extremely important if you're doing adjunct work. If you're an adjunct lecturer, you need to have this RE5 filled out. It doesn't mean that you don't fill it out if you are a full-time um, CUNY faculty. It's just way more important for the person that is working at different colleges so that they can receive credit for that. And if in the event that you need to purchase any type of service, there is a cost letter request form. There is one for tier one and two, which is called the SD-152. And then there's one for tiers three, four, SB-64. Okay, so how is, hopefully everyone is doing okay. Um, let me just check my messages. Okay. Okay. So when we determine your retirement allowance, your retirement allowance is different based on the tier that you are in. So for the retirement allowance, if you're tier one and tier two, your retirement allowance is based on the regular portion of the pension plus the annuity savings fund plus the increased take-home pay. Now, if you're tier one and two, please um, focus on what I'm telling you. These are the three buckets of money that is going to be a part of what your retirement allowance is going to be. Tier three and four and six, I will get to you in just a moment. Now, under tier one, let me provide you with an example. Here is George. He's retiring at 58 with 27 years of service. His final average salary is 100,000 and he's planning to retire July of 2025. Now, when we calculate the information that is in that story that I've just provided for you, for the first 20 years, which is the yellow bar at the bottom, we're going to determine it based on 50% of his final average salary. And for each additional year after the 20 years, it is going to be 1.7%. So for the, and that's gonna be what his regular pension is going to be. So when we do the calculations for the first 20 years, we're taking the final average salary, we're multiplying by 50%, and then we're going to take the final average salary for each additional year and multiply it by the 1.7%. So we're basically taking for the first 20 years, we're multiplying it by the 50%. And then for the seven additional years, we're taking the 100,000, we're multiplying it by seven and we're multiplying it by the 1.7%. And for the regular portion of the pension, for George, he would receive $61,900. That's the regular portion of the pension. Now, to continue further, the annuity savings fund is the second bucket that I've shown you. Now, the annuity savings fund is 
based on the contributions that you as TRS member contributed to this fund. There's a certified rate that you would have received when you first started working and you were a tier one or tier two member. The certified rate is either between zero and 15%. It's based on your age when you first started working and then they project uh, what that percentage is gonna be for the point when you retire. So when you retire, you're not able to contribute anymore to the annuity savings fund. You look at the balance and we divide it by an annuity factor. Now the annuity factor is based on your age at retirement. So the day that you retire, we're going to look at that annuity, we're going to look at your age and we're going to apply an annuity factor that is given to us. Now, if anyone asks, can where can I get these annuity factors? We do not provide them. They're given to us by the office of the actuary. So to show you an example of the annuity savings fund, if you have at the point of retirement 200,000 in that account and then your annuity factor is 11.27, we take the 200,000, we divide it by the annuity factor. And for this example, this person would receive $17,000 annually, which is approximately $1,400 monthly. So that's the second bucket. Now the third bucket is the increased take-home pay. Now under the increased take-home pay, you as a TRS member don't contribute. That's the fund that the city of New York contributes to the contributes to the member's account. It's two and a half percent of the gross of your salary. Now we take the increased take-home pay and we divide it by in the same annuity factor. So what do we do? We take the 100,000, for example, and then we divide it by the annuity factor, which is again, 11.27. And then we're going to divide that and we're going to come up with $8,000 annually, which is approximately $739 monthly. So when we go over the three buckets of money that I've just talked about, as I said to you, under tier one and tier two, your pension is gonna be based on the regular portion of the pension, the annuity savings fund and the increased take on pay. We're gonna add up all three of these amounts together, combine it into one check, all right? And that is how we determine your pension. Now, for my tier one and two members, I have a class that's coming up in July that is going to go over all of the process for retiring. And that is gonna be on June 7th and June 8th. And they, we will again talk about it at the end of the session. But if my colleagues wanna go ahead and post those dates or the links, they can in the chat section. But that's all I have to say about tier one and tier two. Now for tier three and tier four, your pension, which is my pension, is going to be based on the years of service multiplied by the final average salary multiplied by the benefit rate. So when we determine your pension, it's going to be based on the years of service. So if you have between five and 19 years of service, when you retire, the benefit rate will be based on 1.67%. If you retire between 20 and 30 years, the benefit rate is gonna be 2%. And if you retire with over 30 years of service or at 30 years of service, for the first 30 years, it's going to be 60% of the final average salary for the first 30 years, and for each additional year after that, it's gonna be 1.5%, okay? So I told you guys that I have 25 years. For me, it's gonna be 2% if I was to retire tomorrow. But for when I do retire, I will be in the bottom number with the over 30 years of service. So you guys write down the one that is applicable to you. Now to show you an example of the regular pension, here is Emily. She is a tier four with 20 years of service and her final average salary is 100,000. She's planning on retiring as of July. All I'm doing here is taking the 20 years 
I'm multiplying it by the 100,000, which is her final average salary, and I'm multiplying it by 2%. And once we do that, her pension is going to be $40,000 annually, which is approximately $3,333.33 monthly. And that is how we calculate the pension for a tier four member. Now to show you a little bit of a contrast so you have an idea, if you were to retire in 19 years, as I said to you, the benefit rate would be 1.67%. So if Emily was to retire with the benefit rate of the 1.6, which is also known as one and two thirds percent, her pension would be $31,540. If we already know what it would be at 20 years, which is 40,000, if she was to retire at 25 years, the benefit rate would stay at 2% and her amount would be 50,000. So you see the more years of service that you work, the higher the pension is going to be. The difference between five years is $10,000. Now, if Emily was to retire at 30 years, for the first 30 years, we're gonna take the final average salary and we're gonna multiply it by 60%. And that amount is going to be $60,000. Now, if Emily was to work for two additional years, the first 30 stays the same, but for the two additional years, it's one and a half percent. And she would receive an additional $3,000 and that amount in total for 32 years of service would be $63,000. That is how we calculate a tier four pension. It is not difficult to do. You just have to plug in the numbers. Now for tier six, it's a little bit different. It's not the same as a tier four, but you know, it kind of will possibly equal out <laughs> the more years that you work. So if you are under 20 years of service, the benefit rate is 1.67%. If you are at 20 years of service, the benefit rate, excuse me, the benefit rate is 35% of the final average salary. And then if you have over 20 years, for the first 20 years, it stays the same, but it is going to be 2% for each additional year after 20 years. Now, right now, we don't have any tier six members retiring. I just want you guys to know, tier six was only established in 2012. So right now, our oldest tier six member should have about 11 years of service. So sometimes we offer these sessions for tier six and no one shows up because no one is really ready to retire. But to give you an example of how we calculate a tier six pension, here is Jason. He is tier six. He has 25 years of service. His final average salary is the same, 100,000, and he's retiring at the end of December. So for the first 20 years, it's going to be 35% of his final average salary. So for the first 20, it is 35,000. For the five additional years, we're going to add on 2%, and it's going to be $10,000 more. So for his pension at 25 years, it is going to be $45,000, all right? Now, which is $3,700 monthly. Now, to show you it the same way that I did for a tier four, at 19 years, it is one and two thirds percent, he would receive $31,654. If he was to retire after 20 years, as we've already said, it's gonna be 35,000. At 25 years, we already know it's gonna be 45,000 because I've already shown you it on the previous slide. But if he was to work for 32 years, for the first 20 years, it's still going to be 35,000 if everyone sees that. And then for the 12 additional years over the 20, we're gonna take the 12 years, we're gonna multiply it by the final average salary, we're gonna multiply it by 2%, and the amount is going to be $24,000 more for a total of $59,000 for a person who has worked for 32 years. 
When you look at tier four, if you were reminded of the numbers, it was 63,000 for a person that worked for 32 years. So you see where the difference is. So you gotta work a little bit more on the tier four. Now, when it's time for you to retire, and by the way, is there anyone here ready to retire? Let me know, let us know, we're just curious, okay? When it's time for you to retire, you need to let us know what payment options you need to choose. So the payment options available to you is the maximum payment option, the lump sum payment option for tier one and two only. You also have the continuing payment options that are available to you. And then the last one, which is not popular is the guaranteed number of payment options, okay? So how is everyone doing? We're at the midpoint of our meeting. If you have any questions about the pension that my colleagues have not answered, please let me know. You can take yourself off of mute or and ask your question based on what I've just talked about. Because the next thing that I'm gonna talk to you about is gonna be TDA. Any questions? Can yeah, I got can, can you share the payment plan screen again? Sure. Thank you. I am a tier, according to this, I thought I was a tier four because I have a, a double retirement. I am also retiring from NICER as well. As well. I want to combine them both. I, I, I'm not, I haven't decided what year I'm going to um, retire. I have 25 years now, but I was told that I could retire until I was 62 years old. Is that correct? So you're, you're talking a little bit low. You okay, my you mic was money, up. No problem. You said that you have a membership in NICERS and TRS and you have like a total of 45 years. No, not a total of 45 years. Okay. I am uh, 25 years on the job. Okay. I'm 59. I was told that I couldn't retire until I was 62. Is that correct? Well, it all depends on the plan that you are in. But for tier for tier four, You're under CUNY, um, you can retire between the ages of 55 and 62, but it would be, re it would be reduced. Now, if okay. you have over 30 years of service, there would be no reduction at the age of 59. So currently, if you have 25 years and you're the age of 59 in the basic plan, there will be a reduction and you would have to wait until you are 62 if okay. you don't want a reduction in your pension based on age. Yeah, 62 will probably be the, the more wiser age to work until. That's another, what, three or four years? Right, and then yeah, you'll get yeah. Social Security at the same time. That's my plan. Oh, yes. At 62, <laughs> you get Social Security as well? Well, you can. You can, okay. depending on how many years that you work, you're going to contact Social Security to make, you know, that's a part of your planning tools. So you're going to find out when you're eligible. You may oh. get a reduction at 62, but okay. some people are willing to take the reduction. Okay. Because they don't know if they're going to be alive at 65. Exactly. You know, you you got to think about those things because mm -hmm. this is money we're talking about losing and, mm -hmm. you know, you want to enjoy it. That's what the retirement's supposed to be for. Agreed. Exactly. Not Thank for you. your children. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Exactly. Um, Thank I you. think John has his hand raised. Yeah. Uh, Hi, John. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for all the, the information. I just, could you just review a little bit about when you say your total pension would be like $30,000 $30, a year or something, but your monthly payments would be 3000 and something. I was a little confused by those okay. numbers. Well, so that's a good question. What I've shown you basically, let's just show you this screen. Um, these numbers over to the far right, these are the annual amounts. Right. And what you're going to do is divide that by 12 because you're going to receive one check a month for the rest of your life. So the goal is to live. So um, you have to live the entire month. We're currently in the month of May. If you were retired, you would have to live for the whole month of May to get your pension check. And right. it would be divided based on the 12 months of what your annual amount is going to be. So, so that, uh, like that first line there, 31,000. So that's, you divide that by 12 and that gets you your monthly amount. That is correct. But remember, okay. this is a tier six. 
And right. this is for somebody that has 19 years. Now, I don't know how much years that you currently have, but you, you as I said, the more years of service that you have, right. and you know, this is specific to this person's example. It's salary based as well. So your salary may be higher than 100,000 or it could be lower. It all depends on certain right. things. But what right. you can do, there is a TRS retirement calculator that is on the, um, it's on the TRS website. It's not, it's not for the public. You have to log on and then you can play with the retirement calculator where it can give you estimates on what your pension may possibly be like. Okay, thank you. You're quite we have one more question. I don't see his name, but it just says iPhone. I don't know. Okay, your name. no problem. Excuse Mr. Me? Bernard. Bernard. Hi, Bernard. Okay, ask your question. Yeah, my question is about the uh, payment options. Where you know, you know, how do you determine which one of those options to take? Like option one, two, and then you got two, three, four. You know. How do you determine okay. which ones? Okay, it, it really starts off based on your life circumstances, sir. Are you married? Are you in a committed relationship? Are you leaving something for this person? Are the two of you paying bills together? Like you, let's say for example, both of you are paying half and half on the mortgage. So if you were to pass away, does that person still need a portion of your money to be able to pay the half of the mortgage because they cannot afford to without your help. That is part of the planning tools. You, that's the first thing. The next thing is you need to get an estimate. Now, if you are retirement eligible in your annual benefit statement that is on the TRS website, if you look inside of the booklet, it gives you estimates if you are retirement eligible. And it's going to be based on your oldest, your oldest beneficiary that you have on file. So we're giving you an estimate there. You can also get an estimate through CUNY. I think there is somewhere in CUNY, if it's PSC or it's um, the welfare fund, that would give you, um, that would provide you with an estimate of what your pension is going to be if the rules are still the same. Um, that's number two. And then it goes back to number three with the retirement calculator. You go onto the Terrace website, you play with the numbers on the retirement calculator. You put in, for example, your spouse. You put in the spouse. You don't have to be married, by the way. You can put in your spouse as the beneficiary or if you have a child who you want to put in, you can put that down as well. So that is how you make the decision on what is gonna work for you. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna say where this is concerned before I move on to tax deferred annuity, please sign up for the Getting Ready for Retirement Workshop. It would be beneficial for you to go because we're gonna really go over it better and then you'll have a better understanding of how the payout is going to be, okay? All right. So let's talk about retirement planning. Now, in terms of retirement planning, as I said yesterday, and I say this all the time, sometimes for a person like myself, I am worried about what my expenses are going to be after retirement. A lot of people don't retire because there's, they don't think that they can afford to retire. They want to know how much money will they need? Where is this money going to come from? So in terms of retirement income, there are four building blocks of your retirement income if you don't already know. The first one is social security. The second one is the pension plan, which is your QPP. This is why you're here today. The third one is the personal savings, which could be your savings account. But we're gonna focus on the tax deferred annuity, which is what we offer. And then last but not least, it is the retirement income. So how many of you in this room do have a TDA, please let us know in the chat section. So we're focusing on the TDA as of right now, because at TRS, webinar. Okay. at TRS, we offer the QPP and the TDA program, okay? So let's talk about the TX deferred annuity. Now, when it is time for you to retire everyone, there are three options that are available to you for your TDA. 
So you have the option of deferring, you have the option of doing a total withdrawal, and then you have the option of doing annuitizing. Now annuitizing is not as popular, but and withdrawal is not as popular, but the deferral is definitely popular. So you have three options and they, and you have to choose one at retirement. Now, what is the most popular for the TRS member? I'm gonna show you in terms of percentages. We can't really get deep, deep into it again because it's only an hour. So 3% of our members choose to withdraw their TDA, 3% choose to annuitize and over 90% of our members choose to defer their TDA. And that is what we, that's what they like to do. Now, what's the reason why they like to defer their TDA? You're putting a stop on your TDA past your pension. You cannot put new money into the account. Even if you are a CUNY full-time professor and you retire and you're doing adjunct work after retirement, you still cannot put new money into the TDA account. It stops as of your retirement. Now, the benefits of TDA deferral status is you're getting investment returns. You can take out loans and it stays tax deferred. As you know, our kids are older. They probably moved on with their lives and we are getting charged at a single rate or at a higher rate because we don't have dependents. In, in a lot of our cases. So members like to keep their money in the TDA as long as possible. They can elect to withdraw, they can elect to annuitize, and they can do that anytime after retirement. In addition to that, you can maintain TDA deferral status for life. Everything that is in the TDA account, once you die, is going to go to your remaining beneficiaries. And you can retain TDA deferral status until you withdraw everything or you annuitize. Now, by the way, everyone, do you know that this session is being recorded? So um, Jen or Talon or someone is possibly going to make the video available. So I hope everyone is not stressing themselves out on trying to get everything off of the screen because it is being recorded. Is. Now, the next thing that I want to tell you is that under the TDA account, when you choose deferral status, there are partial withdrawals that you can take out. So you take it out on an as-needed basis. You need to fix the sidewalk in front of the house, you take out $5,000. You want to go on vacation, you want to do 10, you want to take out 10,000 for vacation, take $10,000 out. You earned it, spend it as you need to. Now, once you take out a partial withdrawal, the remaining balance is going to stay deferred. But the only thing is, when you decide to retire, you have to start taking out a required minimum distribution. And that happens currently at the age of 73. So if you retire at 62, your money is gonna stay deferred until you are 73. That is not a bad thing. Now, the number for 73 is probably going to increase to 75 next year. But if you're still working and you're 73, you do not have to take out the required minimum distribution. Now, the next option is TDA annuitization. Now, when you annuitize your TDA, like I said, it's only 3% of the members that choose to do so. You are retiring your TDA. You're going to collect a check for your pension, the QPP, and you're going, to reset, you're going to receive a check for your TDA for the rest of your life. So you're going to choose payment options that are going to suit your needs. You're going to select beneficiaries, but you cannot take out loans or anything when you annuitize it. You don't get the deferral status and the investment returns the way that you do under deferral status. Some members like to annuitize. Some members prefer to defer. Now, the last option is the option to do a total withdrawal. This one is not that popular, especially if you are a member that has 800,000 in your TDA account. We have TRS members that have a million dollars, over a million dollars in their account. Members, love our TDA because we offer a fixed rate of eight and a quarter percent. 
Now, if there's no one in this room that, if there's anyone in this room that has not joined the TDA, it's never too late to join. Even if you join for one year and you leave that money alone for 10 years, that money is going to grow. Now, under the TDA withdrawal, you can remove all or part of your TDA funds. You can do a direct withdrawal where the funds are paid directly to you. So if you have 800,000 in your TDA account and you make it payable to you, TRS is gonna take 20% out. That is what the tax consequences are. Now, if you wanna sit there and calculate 800,000 multiplied by 20%, you can see how much taxes that is going to go to the IRS. Members don't like that. They wanna keep their money for them. They don't wanna give it to the IRS. So you try not to take out large, large sums of money if you know that you don't want to pay the taxes. You do have the option to do a rollover as well, and you can roll it over to an IRA. Now, if you roll it over to an IRA, there are no tax consequences as well. So you do have the option of direct withdrawal where there are going to be tax consequences. And if you do a direct rollover, there are no tax consequences. But if you do a direct rollover, make sure that you do your homework to make sure that they're going to give you a, a good rate of return like what TRS currently offers their members because I don't think many people can offer eight and a quarter percent on a fixed rate of return. And all of this can be done online on the TRS website. So when we review the TDA options at retirement, as I said, there are three options, the option to defer, the option to withdraw, and the option to annuitize. Everyone, I want you to know this. You have to make a decision at retirement. You can't say, I'm not going to make this decision. But if you choose to defer, you can do a withdrawal and you can do an annuitize later on. But if you do a total withdrawal, the money cannot come back to TRS. And if you annuitize, you cannot un-annuitize. But when you choose deferral, you can do many things. So under deferral, if your eyes look down to the screen, you have the option to do a loan, partial withdrawals, and change investments and do the RMD. If you do a total withdrawal, you cannot do anything. And if you choose to annuitize, you can only change your investments. Now, if you wanna know more about the TDA program, definitely sign up for one of our sessions and we will be happy to go over it in depth because Jen and Talit only give me an hour to get through everything. <laughs> so what about the distributions of the TDA funds after retirement? This is like, the, the graph that I'm showing you is the members that are currently retired. How many of these members have their money? Where is it distributed? This is not the active member. So members who have been retired for 20, 30 years and they're still in retirement and they're still living, 3% of the members still have it in annuity because you can't un-annuitize, even though that's not a word. You can't undo annuitizing. 34% of our members either withdraw their money or they never participated in the TDA, and over 60% of our members maintain TDA deferral status. And remember, if you pass away and you have deferral status, the entire amount goes to your designated beneficiary. And this is based on like the 2021 20, comprehensive fiscal reporting that is posted on the TRS website. So when do you file for retirement? You choose the day that you wanna retire and you have a 90 day window. Retiring July 1st, you have the window of April 1st to June 30th. You cannot retire on the same day that you file your papers. It's gonna to have to be the next day. So if you're retiring as of December 31st, your, you can file your papers up to December 30th. If you're retiring at the end of August, I think August is 31 days, you have to put in your papers by August 30th. 
Um, so in terms of guidance, we would be happy to guide you where that is concerned. That's what we are here for. Don't forget about other income after retirement, like your social security. We don't handle it. You're going to contact them with regards to that and other income from personal investments. Always remember, the more money that you take out, the more taxes that you are going to pay. So what do we do at Teachers Retirement System? We actually handle your pension and we handle your TDA. What we don't handle is your health insurance. We don't handle the Travia. We don't handle the SHIP. We don't handle your dental. We don't handle the union dues and we don't handle social security. If you have questions about Travia, you definitely need to talk to someone in the benefits office. But um, Travia can be your friend in terms of getting additional service credit. So if you're planning on retiring, make sure that you review your service credit as soon as possible. You need to decide what you're gonna do with the TDA funds and you're gonna decide on the payment option and choose your beneficiaries, okay? Now, when, and for this is for iPhone, when you are choosing your payment options, depending on the tier that you're in, you might be limited. You might only be able to list one person. So it's something that we cannot truly get into right now. So if you are retiring, as if you're not retiring, I still want you to review your service credit as soon as possible. I want you to increase your TDA contributions. You can make an appointment with a PSC representative for a retirement consultation. I'm not sure. Jen, you'll let me know if it's PSC or if it's the welfare fund. I'm not sure. It would be the well, if they want to, it's, it's the welfare fund. Okay, so it's the welfare fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're going to pay off outstanding TRS loans if possible. Now, the consultations, as I said, as I just said, and Jen um, corrected me, it is the welfare fund. It's no longer PSC. Under pension estimates, go to your ABS booklet, take a look at it. Go to the retirement calculator, log on to the TRS account. Get familiar with the TRS account if you're not familiar with it. Save your password. Don't lose it like I do. I put all my passwords in a certain place because there's too many passwords for me to try to remember everything. So if you don't wanna run into problems, save your password, save your username so that you always have access to it. And if you are filing for retirement, you just have to go to the TRS website, log in, go to the uh, e-form section, and then you can file for retirement. So I'm just about ending and I'm going to be here to continue to answer questions about the TDA program and any additional questions that you may have. I just, before okay. anybody goes on, I put in the chat, the PSC thinking of retirement link from the welfare fund. So anybody that needs that information, you can just click on that link there and um, schedule it from there, okay? Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Thank you so much. So as long as, one moment. Okay, so we have educational programs that are available to you. Um, we are not commission employees, we're city employees, just like you are. They're all on the TRS website. Our getting ready for retirement section is, getting ready for retirement is very, very popular for the TRS members. For my tier four members who are not gonna be retiring because I'm pretty sure you guys are not retiring, this year, we have the tier four planning for retirement tool. You can definitely go to that. If we do offer a getting ready for retirement session, it's going to be in the month of August. Because like I said, not, tier six is not retiring right now. Based on the numbers that you, you can see, they're not retiring. Um, there are more targeted topics like service buyback. All of this information is on the TRS website. We have sessions right now for the month of May and the month of July. Now, if you want to know more about the QPP and the TDA retirement process, if you want to know more about the final average salary, the payment options and the TDA options at retirement and how to file your e-form, we have a session for you. 
There's one for part, there's a part one and a part two. Now, here are the dates. If you are tier one and tier two, this is the only session that we're offering because we don't have that many tier one and tier two members anymore. Mm -hmm. It's all under tier three, four, and tier six. So my colleagues are putting in the link about putting um, about the sessions if you want to sign up for them. So for tier one and two, I'm focusing on you guys right now. These are the only dates. I'm not offering another date for the rest of the year because we will have like maybe 20 people in the session. Now, if you are tier three, four, there are various dates all over the TRS website that you can register for. My colleague is putting in a date in there for you. Um, if you want to know just about filing for the retirement online, how to do the e-form, we have a session on May 23rd. And if you are planning on working after retirement, we do have a session for you for that as well. So all of those sessions are available. Now, if you need to contact us, all of, oops, 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 sorry. If you need to contact us, this is how you contact us. You can come to TRS. You can call us. We have a video conferencing. You can email us and then you can mail us. These are all the ways. So we make it as easy as possible for you to be able to get in contact with us. So I have a question that someone said to me. Um, the question is, as long as you take your entire annual RMD at 72, can it come from one or two or several accounts you may have? Must you take it from every account you hold? Good question. Now, first things first, the RMD is for 73 right now, okay? Now, if you have, if you are eligible to take out the RMD, because technically right now, if you're in this class right now with us, you should not be eligible for RMD because you are working. But once you retire and you're eligible for the RMD, you can take it from another 403B account if that is what you want to do. But it must be from a 403B account and it must satisfy the amount that TRS says that you have to take. It cannot come from an IRA. It cannot come from a 401. And then you can take those RMDs through that 403B until you deplete the amount or satisfy the needs. I hope that answers the question. All right. So is there any other questions that someone may have that wasn't answered in the chat? Feel free to take yourself off of mute or raise your hand and we will answer your question. Yes, iPhone. But, yeah, um, the minimum required uh, withdrawal at 73, well, how much is that uh, a percent? Okay, that so that's a good question. We're gonna have a session about the RMD in July of this year. Check the TRS website. Now the percentages do vary. For someone who I think is at 73, the rate might be like under 20% that the person would have to take out. I think it's like 18 point something percent. Don't quote me on it because I haven't seen what the new rates are since um, they changed the amount to the age to 73. But again, if you're currently working, which is what everyone is supposed to be here, you're not eligible for the RMD because you're working. Now, if once you retire and you are 73 or when it changes to 75, then that's when you're gonna start taking out the RMD. The, the okay. 18, 18 or 20%, that's uh, uh, of the total amount that's that, per, per month, that is. That is per year. Oh, RMD, per year. Is an, RMD is an annual, um, okay. it's an annual amount. And we're gonna look at your balances um, as of the year before. For example, this year, the RMD season is beginning right now. So we're gonna look at the balances of a member's account as of December 
31st, 2022, and then we would apply the percentage based on the member's age. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I have a question, if it's okay. Yes, um, good morning. Let's say, let's say I started working in September 2004, but I want to retire. My 20 years will be August 2024. Will I be retired at 19 years or 20 years? Because I, you know, I, I started in early September, but my retirement I would prefer to be the end of August. So, um, you know, I just want to know if I would get 19 years or 20 years. It all depends. It's very difficult for me to answer that question for you. The reason okay. why I say that there are certain things that we would have to look at, or I, I'm not a service person, but we would have to look at what your title is how you are paid, because there's some people that are being paid um, salary. Uh, some people could be paid premium. Um, in addition to that, um, was there any time that was taking off? If you were a person that was working for a straight, a full 20 yes. years, with absolutely no breaks in service, then we would look at the service with something that is called vacation adjustment. And then we would be able to determine how much years of service that you have. Now, in your case, if you want to know, you can request a 20 year date. You can look in your annual benefit statement. It would actually tell you, okay. usually at the top on page number three or page number four, it would tell you when you've attained the 20 years of service. Now, if it doesn't tell you there, you can request a total service letter. My colleague will post the link up. Thank you. And that total service letter, will provide you, we'll, you'll fill it out, you will give it to us, and then we will calculate the years of service that you have. And that will let you, it will let you know when your 20 year date is going to be. Okay, thank you. Also, my yeah. first year was like kind of a probation year. Um, I was paid. Is that counted as part of my 20 year? I'm sorry. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, we didn't yes, want, I don't you. want too much personal information because this is a recorded thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. That's why we don't record our sessions. I know. Yeah, they, I'm so sorry. Yes, no problem. Any other questions? Okay, so I, I have a question. I have a question. I was just trying to log in. Hi, can I ask a question? Go, Go ahead. ahead. Yes. Uh, my question is that I've, I've had this trouble before. Oh, I'm now a full-time member of for City University of New York. I'm t I'm, I have a full-time position. But for many, many years... For like 13 years, I was part-time and adjunct at two different colleges. And every time I request my service, they never get straight. I know that I taught, I know it had to do with how many um, credits you taught each semester, but I know I've checked it. it if you're teaching like 24 credits a year, that counts as a full-time, you know, get full service credit for that whole year, right? I think it's 24 credits because it's 360 hours or something like that. If that, he that, makes it on hours. Right, on hours. So it turns hours out 360 hours. hours. It turns out like a 24 credit hour a year. But I know what it is. So I know that for those for 13 years, I was always teaching in the two different colleges enough to have the 360 hours. But I ne whenever I get a statement from them, they I never get the full credit for those 13 years. I only get like eight years or nine years but it, it, does it make sense for me to come down to trs to try to straighten it out how do i i can't seem to ever straighten it out no matter how many times i went down to trs previously i mean have i went you, down but i never spoke to someone uh, have you let me ask this question have that are the re5s being filled out based on the colleges excuse me the what re5s the service data form uh -huh. I, I mean i didn't I didn't do it. I did it many years ago. I don't know before we were online. Okay. So, so you let me give my colleague is going to post the RE5. Right. Um, it's on it's in the link. They're going to post it because I can, right. again, I cannot see the chat for some reason. Right, right. Um, yeah. So what they're going to do is post that. Click that link and you're going to print it and then you're going to go to those colleges that you did work. Yeah. Or if you're still working with them and have yeah. them fill it out because um the re5 if you, if the re5 is not filled out that could be the reason why we're missing information from you right and after that is filled out that's when you can come to trs right okay, okay. great i really, really help appreciate your help so much 
you're okay. quite welcome. <laughs> So I'm, I'm leaving this, I'm leaving this screen up so people can see, you know, what sessions that we currently have. Again, you come to the session on your leisure and you sit there and you listen to us talk and you learn things. It's very, very popular where, um, where we're concerned, um, where the TRS members are concerned. So if you guys want, you come to those sessions so that you can learn more about your retirement so that you can get a better understanding of it. Go ahead, Jenna. Were you going to say okay. something? No, I was just going to ask if there were no more questions or if there was additional questions, but I do would, I would like for you or one of your team members just to send me that page, the one that you had the contact information. So sure, I can I'll post it, it on our wellness page and it sure. could be just like there because um, on our wellness page, we have the financial awareness. So I would just post this so that, you know, at any time they had a question they would, you know, they'd be able to see where to go or what to do. Sure, not a Thank problem. Thank you. And how will we get a copy of this recording, please? We will re we will email it. Okay, great, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Did a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you. Have I a say, great day, Thank everyone. you, Jenna. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye. Thank you.